Welcome to Single Crystal 4. In this tutorial we're going to create a new crystal structure and simulate its diffraction properties. We'll then use the inspector to change the display and we'll edit the structure interactively to see how the diffraction pattern changes. Let's start with an empty window and we'll add a new crystal using the crystal editor. I'm going to go to the add pop-up menu and choose new crystal and you'll see that we get an editing sheet. This interface will appear familiar to those of you with Crystal Diffract or Crystal Maker. Now we're going to start by entering the space group symbol. And we use a standard syntax as used in our other programs. And we need spaces between the different symmetry operators. So I'm going to enter a cubic space group F D bar three M. And notice that as we type, the program checks our syntax. Now this particular space group has two possible origins and we're going to tell the program that we want the second origin. We now need to specify our unit cell dimensions. And this is where the program differs from Crystal Maker. Single Crystal lets you experiment with distorting the unit cell parameters. So even though we've specified a cubic space group with a cube-shaped unit cell, we need to enter all six lattice parameters just in case you want to make any changes. So I'm going to enter 8.08 .08 as my A, B and C parameters and we'll leave alpha, beta and gamma at 90 degrees. Now we now come to defining the asymmetric unit. This is the minimum group of atoms which, when combined with the lattice type and space group symmetry elements, is sufficient to generate the entire contents of one unit cell. Now it turns out that the structure we're building has 56 atoms in the unit cell, but we only need to specify three in the asymmetric unit because of all our symmetry. Now we already have a dummy site silicon at 000, and I can edit these settings. So from left to right, we have an on column. Uh, this is whether the site should be used for the diffraction calculation. This is a useful way of determining the effects of one site on the overall diffraction. We can toggle this on or off. We want it on for now. Uh, then we have a site label. Now this is your way of identifying the site. I'm going to type M here, and I can tab to move to the next site, where we have occupancy. Now this is essentially the chemical formula for the site. You need one or more element symbols, and they should match the element symbols that are present in the uh, scattering factors pane of the preferences panel. That's how single crystal is going to relate the diffracting power of a particular site to its tabulated values. Now in this site I'm going to enter aluminium and I just want 100% aluminium so I don't need to type in 1.0, the program will do that for me. But I could have a mixed occupancy. It's important to emphasize the occupancy total cannot exceed one. Let's move on to the X, Y and Z coordinates. Now these are fractions of the unit cell repeat in each distance. They're not absolute distances, they're fractional coordinates. And I'm going to uh, specify that this site is at a half, a half, a half. I can type fractions or decimals, so let's do a half, a half, a half. And I can hit return, and then this is uh, recognized. Now finally we have the option of entering isotropic or anisotropic displacement parameters. These are the columns U11, U22 and so on. And at the far end we have type none, UISO or UIJ. What do these mean? Well, uh, these can be used to designate the uncertainty in the exact atomic position, typically caused by temperature. Atoms move and represented by a sphere or an ellipsoid, thermal ellipsoids. We're going to ignore those for now. Now we need to add two more sites, and I can do that uh, by clicking the Add button here at the bottom of the, uh, the table, or as a shortcut, I can just double click anywhere below the uh, list row, and a new site is created for me. 
So let's make this a T site with 100% magnesium, and this is at an eighth, an eighth, an eighth. And let's add one more site, and we'll make this oxygen, 100% oxygen occupancy, and this at 0 0.262, 0 0.262. I'm pressing the tab key here to move between fields, 0.262. I hit return, and those are the three sites in my list. Let's go ahead and generate the crystal and its diffraction pattern by clicking the OK button down in the bottom right hand corner. So here we have a simulated diffraction pattern for the crystal that we've just entered. And you can see that we have a thumbnail over here in the patterns list. I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call this cubic spinel. Now, the default simulation type is transmission electron diffraction. This is the title here above the diffraction pane. So we're effectively looking at a section through the reciprocal lattice. But notes that you can use the diffraction menu to choose different types of simulation should you require that. On the right hand side, we have a stereographic projection. This gives us an indication of the orientation of the crystal. I'm going to hide this for the moment so we have more space for our diffraction pattern. And let's just zoom up a little bit. Now you can toggle these reflection labels on or off by clicking the labels button in the toolbar. The reflection at the center is 000, that corresponds to our straight through beam. Notice that some reflections are missing. In fact, quite a few reflections are missing. We go straight from 000 to 400 to 800 and so on. So there are missing reflections in here, which we call absences. And what's more, these missing reflections are absent through large parts of the pattern in a very systematic way. So they're called systematic absences. So these are caused by the lattice type, we have a cubic F lattice here, and also by symmetry elements within the space group. And we can opt to display the absences on the screen by going to the display inspector and the absences group. So let's show the absences caused by lattice type by clicking this checkbox. And these are marked with an X. There's an awful lot of these. Notice there are still some missing reflections here and here, and here, and so on. So let's try turning on the space group absences. So these are absences caused by symmetry elements such as glide planes and screw axes, and so on. These are important in the context of electron microscopy, because if you ever get double diffraction, then you may get uh, the systematic absences caused by space groups appearing as bona fide reflections. So it can be useful to leave these square uh, symbols turned on. Now we can adjust the size of these symbols using the uh, slider control here, and you can also adjust their opacity depending on how prominent you want to make them. We also have the option using this labels group of labeling the forbidden reflections. That makes the display a little bit crowded, so we'll, we'll leave those labels off for the moment. Single Crystal lets you interactively change many parameters using its inspector. And these include the unit cell dimensions. So let's see what happens if we distort the unit cell. But before we do that, we'll make a copy of our pattern to use as a reference. And we can do that by going back to the patterns list and we'll right click on the thumbnail that represents our display diffraction pattern, and we'll choose the duplicate command. And let's call the copy cubic spinel reference. And let's take the original crystal and let's call this test crystal. Now it would be helpful to choose a distinctive color for our test crystal. So we can do that by going to the coloring group in the display inspector and let's make these reflections red and we can probably color the labels as well we click the match pattern and now the labels are colored now i want to have both diffraction patterns visible so that any changes that i make are readily apparent 
So I'm going to go to my reference pattern. I'm going to turn off its labels to avoid confusion. And I'm going to shift click on the test crystal so that appears on top. Notice that the patterns are listed in order of height so that the uh, top pattern is at the top of the list and the bottom pattern is at the bottom of the list. Now let's change some simulation parameters. So we'll go to the simulate inspector and we're going to go down to the unit cell group. First of all, let's try changing the volume. And notice before we do that, that we're going to be changing the volume, not for both crystals, although both of these patterns are selected. It's the primary selected pattern, the one with the yellow highlight, whose parameters will be changed. So I'm going to click and drag the volume slider. And you can see that as I reduce the volume, my spots move further apart. And as I increase the volume, the spots move closer in. We're effectively looking at a section of the reciprocal lattice, so reciprocal cell parameters are being shown in the reflection spacings. Now we'll try changing the shape of the unit cell. Let's imagine that we have a phase transition that involves a reduction in symmetry to tetragonal, so the unit cell is going to expand or contract along one direction. Let's try changing our A parameter. So as I increase my A parameter, you can see the red reflections move inwards, and as I decrease the A parameter, they move outwards along this horizontal direction, which is our A star direction. Now we'll try changing the occupancy of a site to simulate the effect of substituting one element for another. And to do this, we'll close up the unit cell group. Let's move down to the site occupancy group. I want to simulate what happens when I substitute strontium for magnesium on the T site. So I need to choose the site I'm interested in using this combo box. Um, I can use the pop-up menu or I can type the site I'm interested in. T is the site I want and the occupancy of that site is shown in this list below and currently we just have magnesium. So we want to add a new occupant. So I'll add the New occupant by clicking this add button and I'm going to type SR for strontium. Notice that this lock occupancy total checkbox is set and that means that as I change the occupancy of one of the occupants, the other occupant changes. Now these effects can be quite subtle so to make them clearer I'm going to tidy up the display a little bit. So we'll hide our reference pattern and we're going to hide our systematic absences. And the other thing we need to think about is the intensity uh, at which these reflections are being shown. We don't want the reflections to appear too fully saturated, otherwise we can't see subtle changes. I can change things interactively by going to the detector group here, and I'm going to turn the saturation right down. We'll see those intensities change. And I think we'll also hide the labels here. And we'll zoom in a little bit. Now let's try changing the in uh, proportion of strontium on the site. As we reduce the amount of strontium, some of the reflections, like this reflection down here, uh, bar 660, get weaker. As we increase the proportion of strontium, the intensities get stronger. We can go backwards and forwards with the sliders, and you can see the intensities changing interactively. So that's a quick overview of using single crystal to build a new crystal structure, view its simulated diffraction pattern, and interactively change some of the parameters.